Alrighty guys, so in this lecture we're going to be reviewing all the information that's going to be on quiz number four. Okay, so there's going to be three different topics on quiz number four. The first topic is going to be about the difference between atoms versus molecules. So basically all that you need to know for this is that atoms are basically individual elements. You can kind of think of them as like Lego blocks, like we mentioned before in previous lectures. There's just like multiple, there's like one piece, whereas molecules are combinations of these atoms. So these Lego blocks will come together and when they make a Lego structure, so if I have like multiple pieces kind of coming together, that's going to be what a molecule is like. An atom is just one element, whereas a molecule is when you have multiple coming together. And this is how you write the formula. So basically, if you notice, there are different elements inside of this molecule. So elements, you can tell that there's individual elements by looking for the capital letters. So here we have capital C and a lowercase a. We know that that element is going to be calcium, Ca. So how many calciums are there? Since there's no number behind it, that means that we only have one calcium. Okay, so for this molecule right here, this big ugly thing with the parentheses, we know that there is one calcium atom inside of this molecule. All right, we also notice that there is hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to figure out how many of each there are. Now, the problem is that there are these parentheses. Okay, so what these parentheses mean is that there's always going to be a number on the bottom right of the parentheses. Okay, and that number, basically, you just multiply everything inside the parentheses by that number. So here, I have HCO3 inside of the parentheses, and there's a 2. That means all you're going to do is you're going to multiply everything on the inside of the parentheses by 2. So if you look inside the parentheses, how many hydrogens are there? There's only one, because there's no number here on the bottom right. If there's no number, that means there's one hydrogen. If you look for the carbons, there's no number, so that means I have one carbon. And if you look at here, the three applies to the element in the front, so there's going to be three oxygens. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this two and multiply everything on the inside by the number on the outside. So I'll do one times two, which is going to give me two hydrogens. One times two, which is going to give me two carbons, and two times or three times two which is going to give me six oxygens. Okay, so this is how many of each element are inside of this molecule. So this big ugly molecule, Ca parentheses HCO3 parentheses 2, that's what it's made out of. All right, and so this is, and then we also learned this week how to draw chemical reactions. So here it says, a K2O molecule reacts with an H2O molecule and it produces two KOH molecules. Now we learned earlier this week that when you have a chemical reaction, um, on the left side is going to be the reactants, your starting chemicals, and on the right side is going to be your products, the chemicals that you make. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the chemical equation. So the chemical equation, we want to start with the reactants. What do we start off with? It says here in this problem, if you read it carefully, a K2O molecule reacts with an H2O molecule. That means that these two molecules are going to be reacting. So I'm going to write K2O is going to react plus H2O because these are the two things that are reacting together. And it says that these two react to produce, so it makes two different KOH molecules. So basically, these atoms rearranged, and they made two different molecules. So this is it. This is going to be our chemical equation. For B, how many total reactants and products are there? So if you notice, how many K2Os do we have? There's no number in the front. That means I have one K2O molecule. Actually, let's label uh, the reactants and the products. Okay, so for the reactants... I have one K2O molecule. My other reactant is H2O. How many do I have? It looks like there's no number, so I have one H2O. For my product, the stuff that I made, I have KOH, but how many KOHs did I make? There's a number two in the front. That means I have two 
KOH molecules. All right, so if we drew a picture of this reaction, I'm going to erase part B just so I have a little bit of room. But if I drew a picture of this reaction, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take every single one of these molecules and just draw however many they are. Okay, so if we start with K2O, K2O is just one molecule. And what does it look like? It's made out of two different K atoms. So I'm going to do is I'm going to write two different K atoms. And there's also an O. So that means that this molecule right here is going to be made out of two different K molecules, I mean K atoms and one O atom, but they're all stuck together because it's one molecule. So this is going to be what K2O looks like. It's two K atoms connected to an O. Plus H2O, water, is made out of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So I'm going to draw O and H. Okay, so H2O looks like this. There's two hydrogens and an oxygen. And if you notice, these are all combined because it's one molecule. But if you notice, these two are separate because they're two different molecules. And they create KOH. So I'm going to draw a molecule where I have K, I have O, and I have H. So your picture might look a little bit different from mine, but the key thing is that they're all touching together if they're part of the same molecule. So I drew a KOH. I drew K touching O touching H. They're all connected. But if you notice, there's a 2 in the front. That means there's going to be two separate KOH molecules. These two are not going to be touching, though, because they're two separate molecules. That's why there's a 2 in the front. So if there's a 2 or a number on the bottom, that's smaller, a, a subscript, it's going to be applying to, it's going to make the, there be multiple of that atom inside that molecule. But if it's a two in the front, that means it's separate molecules. So this is what the picture of this reaction is going to look like. So if you're having trouble drawing the pictures, make sure you pause the video uh, or rewind it and make sure you guys understand how we got these pictures because guaranteed this is going to be on your quiz. All right. Let's move on to the second topic on the quiz. The second topic on the quiz is about ionic compounds. Now we said that ionic compounds are going to be compounds or molecules that are made out of metals plus nonmetal. Okay. So here we're going to draw the picture and write the equation for the chemical reaction between K and N. Okay. So let's start with the picture. So I'm going to draw the picture first. So for our picture, we start with K and we start with N. Now, the first thing we want to do is draw the Lewis structures with the valence electron. So K, if you notice, is the first box in the first or in the fourth row. Since it's the first box, it's going to have one valence electron. Okay. Now, if you take a look at nitrogen, though, nitrogen is going to be the fifth box. Since it's the fifth box, right, because one, two, three, four, five, it's going to have five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we want to figure out if an element wants to gain or lose um, electrons. So if you look at K, and we should be experts at doing this, but if you don't know how to do this yet, make sure you go back and look at the MCI video lecture. This is where we first learned about this. K is going to want to lose one electron, whereas N is going to want to gain three electrons. Okay, so what's going to happen is naturally, since this one, K wants to get rid of electrons, nitrogen wants to gain electrons, K is going to give electrons to nitrogen. Okay, so this K is happy now. But nitrogen is not happy because nitrogen only gained one. But how many does it want? It wants to gain three. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add another K. OK, but you guys should be able to tell by now that it's not going to be enough. Nitrogen wants three. So we're going to have to have three K's total. Because if we have three K's total, all the K's are going to give an electron to nitrogen. All the K's are happy because they lost one electron, and nitrogen will be happy because it gained three electrons. 
Okay, so that's going to be our picture of how the, uh, the electrons move. All right, now if we write the equation, let's figure out what we started. We started out with K, okay, and we combined that with N. But how many Ks do we have? We have three different Ks. So since these three are all separate, right, they didn't start combined together, we're going to put a three in the front. Okay, if we wrote K3, that means all three Ks would have to have been connected. But these aren't connected, they're all separate, and that's why we cannot use K3. We have to use 3K. Plus, we only used one nitrogen, so we don't need to put a number in the front. We can just write N, and that's going to create... Now, we learned with ionic compounds, what's going to happen is when K gives up an electron, it becomes positive, And when nitrogen gains electrons, it becomes negative. And what's going to happen is that positive and negative comes together and they're going to combine to form one molecule. So if we form one molecule with these three atoms, we're going to create K3N. And this time we do K3 because the Ks are going to be connected to each other because they're one molecule. So this is going to be your equation. All right, so if you feel pretty confident doing that, feel free to pause the video and then we will and then try out number 2. If not, I'm just going to go over it step by step. So for number two, we're going to draw a picture and equation for the reaction between boron, B, and O. So we're going to draw a picture, and we're also going to be writing an equation. All right, so for B, if you take a look at B, how many valence electrons does it have? B is going to have three valence electrons. Okay, and then the other one is going to be O. O is going to have six valence electrons, so... One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and if we think back to what they want to do, B is going to want to lose three electrons. Oxygen is going to want to gain two electrons. Now, again, if you don't know how to figure this out, make sure you go back and watch the MCI video lecture, okay, where we talk about how we figure out if they gain or lose. All right, so that means B is going to want to get rid of electrons, and O wants electrons. So that means naturally B is going to give its electrons to O. So B is going to give two of its electrons to O. It's going to give two because O only wants two. Once it gets two, it doesn't want any more. So O is happy now. But B is not happy because B wants to give up three. So what's going to happen is we're going to add another O. And that lets us get rid of this electron from B. So B is going to give its third electron to the second O. Okay, so B is happy because it got rid of all three valence electrons. But O is unhappy because it wants to gain two, but it only gained one. So what's going to happen is we're going to have to add another B. So we're going to add a second B. And what's going to happen is this second B is going to give an electron to O, and now this O is happy, but this B is not happy because it only gave away one. It wants to give away the other two as well. It wants to give away three total. So I think you guys can see the pattern. We're going to add another oxygen. So oxygen wants to gain two. B wants to give away two more since it got rid of the third one, and so we're going to give it to oxygen, and now all three, all all of the atoms are happy because both of the B's gave away three. There's three arrows going away from it, and all the O's gains two. There's two O's, or there's two arrows going towards them. So when we write the chemical equation, we're going to write our starting materials, our reactants, B and O. How many B's did we start with? We started with two B's, and we started with three O's. And they're all going to combine to form B2O3. Okay, and this is going to be your equation. Alrighty, guys. So that's going to be it for ionic compounds. Again, if you're having trouble, I encourage you to go back and watch that lecture or review the this uh, this video lecture. 
Um, but we're going to move on to the last topic for, that's going to be on your quiz. And the last topic is about covalent compounds. Okay, so for covalent compounds, um, ionic compounds were when there's a metal and a non-metal and they, one of them gives electrons to the other one. In covalent, covalent compounds, we have multiple non-metals and they share electrons. Okay, so there's a couple things you need to remember. Remember the octet rule. The octet rule is that they all want, every element has to have eight valence electrons, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen wants two valence electrons. Okay, so everything is going to want eight. Make sure every atom has eight valence electrons, and hydrogen only has two. Remember that hydrogen is always going to go on the outside, so when you're planning your Lewis, your dot structure, um, you put H's on the outside, C's and SI's go in the middle, and the elect elements that are more electronegative go on the outside. So if you go up and to the right, it gets more electronegative. So if you have multiple elements, um, just, pick, just put the ones that are more electronegative towards the outside. Okay? There are sometimes they won't be on the complete outside, um, but usually they tend to be on the outside. Okay, so let's draw these structures, um, and we're going to do two, three different things. First, we're going to draw how the electrons are shared. Secondly, we're going to draw the stick structure. And then lastly, after that, we're going to write down how many of each bond there are. So there are a lot of things to do. Um, but let's start with the first one. So I'm going to make a little bit more space. So let's start with N2H2. So for N2H2, what we're going to do first, um, so there's multiple ways to draw the dot structures here. I'm going to teach you a different way than what you guys uh, learned in the previous lecture. So this is going to be a different way of drawing covalent compounds. So. Um, first thing you can do is you can count how many total valence electrons there are. So count all the valence electrons. Okay, so what do I mean by that? This molecule, N2H2, is made out of N, N, H, H, right? There's four different elements. There's two Ns. There's two Hs. So what you can do is you can first count how many valence electrons there's going to be total. So before you even start planning what the molecule is going to look like, let's write down how many valence electrons every single atom is going to bring. So let's look at N. How many valence electrons is N going to bring? So N is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's box number 5. So N is going to bring 5 valence electrons. Okay, but there's two of them, so we just multiply that by two, so the ends are going to bring 10 valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron because it's the first box, so one valence electron, but there's two different hydrogens, so we're going to have to multiply that by two. So if we multiply that by two, that's going to be two total valence electrons. So here, the Ns, each of them brings 5, and there's two of them, so 10, and the Hs bring 1 each, times 2, which is 2. So that means this molecule in total is going to have 12 valence electrons that you have to work with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow these rules to kind of set up what our molecule looks like. So N2H2. So we know that H goes on the outside, so let's put Hs kind of on the outside. And that means we'll put the ends on the inside. All right, so, and this will be our how their, the electrons are shared, so I'm going to put part A. Okay, so what the reason why we counted the valence electrons is because this tells us how many electrons we can draw and how many lines we can draw. So we know already that every single atom needs to be connected. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create lines so that every single atom is connected. Okay, we know that one line is going to be equal to two electrons. So every time we draw a line to connect the elements, the atoms, we're using two electrons. So if I just connect everything together, 
how many electrons did I use? I used two, four, six. I used six electrons. That means that I have six valence electrons left to work with. Now we said the octet rule, everything needs eight. Every single element needs eight valence electrons except for hydrogen because hydrogen needs two. Now we're already done with hydrogen. Hydrogens are good to go because if you notice, hydrogen has a line connected to it. That means it's using two electrons. So hydrogen is happy and this hydrogen is happy. The only thing that we have left to do is make sure that these nitrogens are happy. Okay, so let's kind of write, I'm going to write down some things just so that we keep these in mind. So these hydrogens are happy because they're, they have two valence electrons, right? Because they have a line and this hydrogen is happy because it has two valence electrons. But let's count how many electrons these nitrogens have. This nitrogen right here has two lines connected to it. So that means it's, it has four valence electrons. And this one also has four because there's two lines, right? Two, four. So that means we need to use these six electrons so that both of these nitrogens can get to eight. So we kind of have to play a game to figure out how to get it to eight. So let's say I just try to get this nitrogen to eight. I use one, two, three, four. That makes this nitrogen eight. Okay, so this nitrogen is happy now, this hydrogen is happy, this hydrogen is happy. Okay, but this nitrogen is not happy because it only has four, but we just added four, so that means we have two left. So I'm going to put two electrons here, and now we have zero left. Okay, and this nitrogen has six. Okay, the problem though is that this nitrogen needs eight, right? Remember the octet rule. This nitrogen needs eight valence electrons. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make it so that both of these nitrogens can have eight. Now, we can't just take two electrons and put them here because then this nitrogen is going to be unhappy. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make these nitrogens share two of the electrons. So we're going to take the two that were here, and then we're going to put another line in between. If we put another line in between, both of these nitrogens have eight, because this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. And there we go. Our structure is good to go. We have, we have um, eight electrons for both nitrogens, and we have two for both hydrogens. And... If we want it, we can only use 12 total. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 valence electrons. So this is how the electrons are going to be shared. All right. For part B, let's draw the stick structure. Uh, stick structure is very simple. We just don't draw these dots. So we can do N, H, dash N. And then we want two dashes, and we want an H. And so this is going to be our stick structure. For how many bonds we have, what types of bonds, every line that's by itself is a single bond. So we have one, two single bonds. And then two lines are going to be a double bond. So we have one double bond. All right, and there you go. That's going to be your answer for number one. So if you feel pretty confident trying these out on your own, you can pause the video and try number two. Um, but if not, I'm going to take it step by step. All right, so for number two, we're going to use this method where we count the valence electrons again. So if we count, so if we look at C on the periodic table, first we're going to figure out how many valence electrons C provides. Okay, C is box number one, two, three, four. That means C is going to provide four valence electrons. Hydrogen is box number one, so every single hydrogen provides one. So we have one, but there's three of them, so that's going to be th times three, which will be three. Oxygen, if you count the boxes, is going to be box number five, six, so oxygen is going to provide six. Hydrogen outside is going to provide one. So 
Here we have 4, 3, 6, 1. So how many total electrons do we have to work with? We have 14 valence electrons. So when we're drawing the structure, what we can do is we can start organizing these atoms together using these rules. So we said earlier that the C has to go in the middle and H goes on the outside. So I'm going to put C in the middle and I'm going to put the H's around it. Now if you notice with this formula, the H's are separated, right? There's CH3 and then there's another H, OH. Okay, remember from the last lecture that if they're separated like this, it kind of tells you which one it's connected to. So these three H's are probably connected to the C because it's right next to the C. And this H is probably connected to the O because it's separated from the other H's. So we have three H's around the C because C goes in the middle, H goes on the outside. And then we're going to write O and then H is probably connected to the O. So I'll put the H right there. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to draw lines in between all of the atoms. So we said that the H's are going to be connected to the C, and this H is probably connected to the O. And in order for it to be a molecule, all of the atoms need to be connected together. So we're going to connect the C and the O. We said that we have 14 valence electrons to work with. What that means is we need to make sure we count um, how many lines there are. Every line is two electrons, so one line is two electrons. And so let's count how many electrons we use. We have one, two, three, four, five lines. If we have five lines, that means we used 10 electrons. And we only have, can have 14, so that means we have four electrons left. Okay, we can only use four more. Okay, let's figure out which atom needs electrons. So if you remember, H needs two valence electrons. If H needs two valence electrons, what that means is every single H can only hold two. It could either have two dots around it or it can have one line coming out. Now if you look at all the H's, the, all the H's are happy because the H's all have one line connected to it. Okay, so for carbon and oxygen, we need to make sure we follow the octet rule. That means they both need to have eight valence electrons. So carbon, if you count how many electrons it has, is it has two, four, six, eight. So this one is using eight valence electrons already. So this carbon is happy, but oxygen has only two, four. It only has two lines connected to it. That means carbon, this oxygen is only using six valence electrons. But we have four left. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's using four electrons, four valence electrons, because there's two lines. Sorry about that. Disregard what I just said. Oxygen has four valence electrons because there's only two lines connected to it. So oxygen still needs four, but carbon has eight. That means only oxygen needs more electrons. Lucky for us, we have four electrons left to use. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw four dots on oxygen, which means oxygen is now at 8, and we've used 14 valence electrons. You can also check your answer by counting the lines and the dots. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. So there you go, guys. That's going to be how the electrons are shared for, your, uh, for this molecule, CH3OH. Okay, for our stick structure, all we need to do is basically copy it down without any of the dots. Okay, and then lastly, we just count how many of each bond we have. So if you take a look at it, this molecule only has single lines. So it only has single bonds. It has one, two, three, four, five single bonds. So this one has five single bonds. All right, so that's going to be how you draw the stick structures and count the bonds. Now, I'm going to do one last example. This one's going to be one of the trickier ones, but hopefully it'll help you guys as you guys uh, prepare for the quiz.